In the prison of cardiovascular disease or renal complications, you should use these agents independent of hemoglobin A1C. You know, you can have hemoglobin A1C of seven and I would still start SGLT2 in somebody who had heart failure. And the other thing to keep in mind is that the only two groups of drugs, so the GLP-1 and SGLT2s, are the only two drugs that we have for diabetes therapy that are associated with weight loss. So weight loss is extremely important and I think this is going to be what we call the next frontier in diabetes care.
rate of overweight and obesity, the one that give you diabetes and pre-diabetes. So if you look at several intervention studies, like for example, this is a diabetes prevention studies, you see that weight loss is better than any medication, but in this case, the metformin, and it's better than placebo, and weight loss preventing diabetes in more than 50% if you lose just 7% of body weight. So, so somewhere around 5, 10, 15 kilos was able to prevent diabetes. How much weight is shown in this slide? If you lose uh, 5, 10%, 10 kilograms, the diabetes usually improve or you can prevent progression. And it was discussed in the le lecture for obesity, you know, you can even go to diabetes remission. And this is what it was di discussed by Amy in the previous lecture of the direct trial. This was an intervention in general internal medicine to produce weight loss, and the baseline characteristics are listed here to the left. About 59% were male, the BMI was 35, age is 50, duration of diabetes three years, and they have a 7.7 .7 in hemoglobin A1C and weight loss of 5, 10, 15 kilograms. If you lose 10 kilograms, the diabetes, 50% of people went into remission. Diabetes went away. Well, it didn't go away. It went to the remission that was defined as having a normal hemoglobin A1C less than 6.5 off any medicine for at least three months. And you see that if you lose uh, 12 and 24 months, here you have, in this group of people who lost weight, about half of them went and achieved remission. If you improve glycemic control, you don't do remission of diabetes. What you have is to lose weight. There is another trial that was done, this, the previous trial was done in Europe. This was done in Africa. And, and same concept, intervention to produce weight loss, same group of people, in this case, there were more male to 73% were male, but about the same BMI, 35% BMI for a duration of two years. Hemoglobin A1C, about 7.7. .7. And producing weight loss was associated with 60% remission. So people with diabetes who already <coughs> have diabetes for a couple of years, 60% of them stopped taking medicine, normalized blood glucose, and did, and you know, and achieve very good, good good glucose control. If you give any medicine for diabetes, glucose comes down, but the risk of complications all the way is going to be there. Not only weight, but there are medication for obesity. I'm not sure how my, how many of you use this, but if you use a pentamine to pyramide, what is called the sequel studies, you're going to see that you're going to prevent progression from pre-diabetes to diabetes in about half of the patients. So weight loss, independent, independent of how you achieve, is associated with improvement or decreased risk of progression to diabetes. What about cardiovascular risk factors? That's right. We know that about 60 to 80 percent of patients with type 2 diabetes are going to die because of cardiovascular disease. So this is the result of what is called the Look Ahead trial. And this is studies on weight loss or intervention for weight loss in patients with established type two. And you're looking in here at the different cardiovascular risk factors. In the upper corner is hemoglobin A1C. You have here blood pressure. Here you have fasting glucose, triglycerides, HDL. And you will see that there is a very nice re re decrease in hemoglobin A1C. Same thing here for fasting glucose. Dystolic and systolic blood pressures came down. Here you have triglyceride. Look at these magnitudes of reduction of triglyceride concentration. And here you have the increase in HDL. So weight loss is associated with a significant improvement of cardiovascular risk factors. And if you look at series, for example, on bariatric surgery and cardiovascular mortalities, this is a meta-analysis showing all-cause mortalities in a large number of clinical trials, and you see that bariatric surgery with weight loss is associated with a significant risk of dying of cardiovascular complications. And here you have the more common cardiovascular complication with weight loss. Here you have atrial fibrillation, significantly decreased heart failure. And this is independent of SGLT2 or any other medicine. Just weight loss decreased the risk of heart failure, decreased the risk of myocardial infarction, decreased the risk of stroke. This is much better 
than what you're going to in achieve with medication for blood glucose control. So weight loss is not only the cause why people develop diabetes and prediabetes, but it's associated with significant risk of cardiovascular disease. The other thing is quality of life. If you have an obese patient that loses 10, 15 kilograms, it's associated with improvement of quality of life. Here in the top is those who lose weight. Here in the top, those who are in this trial and where they didn't lose weight. So weight loss per itself improves your quality of life of patients. So there is much, much to do, much more that you can achieve with glucose control. And there are several trials that look at pharmacoeconomics. Weight loss reduces the lifetime healthcare costs. And this is decreased because of complications. This is because of quality of life. Both direct and indirect costs are significantly improved. This is why the American Diabetes Association will concentrate and will tell you that weight loss has to be assessed in everybody who is treated with diabetes. And we have to avoid medications that are associated with weight gain and use medications such as looking here, the GLP-1 receptor analogs and SGLT2s as the preferred agent for those who are overweight. There's multiple trials that is showing that intervention for weight loss prevent diabetes. You don't lose, you don't need to lose much. Just five to 7% of weight loss of body weight is associated with 50%, 70% reduction in the risk to going to diabetes. I mentioned to you this trial before. If you lose 10 to 15 kilograms, more than 50% of patients have diabetes remission. Normal hemoglobin A1C off medications. If they happen to lose more than 15, uh, 15 kilograms, about 86% goes into remissions. Even if you just lose five to 10 kilograms, 33%. So it's much more than what you can achieve given medication for glucose. You have to achieve uh, uh, weight loss. So what we have right now, we have several incretins that is the most effective agent for produce weight loss. The SGLT2s produce somewhere around two to three kilograms weight loss, but the GLP-1 has been shown to have much more success. And these are the different agents that we have over the different trials. So liraglutide, for example, three milligrams, is associated with significant weight loss. And in patients who has prediabetes, it prevents the development of type two diabetes. Look at the improvement of glycemic control. So Weight loss, independent of, of any medication, if you just use any medicine, GLP-1, that produces weight loss, you prevent diabetes. This is semaglutide, 2.4 milligrams, that is for weight loss. And you see here to the left, it changes um, from baseline in body weight, and to the right, here you have the changes over time in, in kilograms. And you can achieve with this agent somewhere around 10 to 16% of body weight. So you're talking about 10 to 20 kilograms using these agents in patients with type two diabetes. Uh, the previous speaker talked about, about the GLP, uh, GLP-1 receptor analog combination. This is called tirsepatide, recently approved by the FDA. And here you have to the left is hemoglobin A1C you can achieve a reduction of 2.5% just with weight loss. And to, the, to, to your right is changes in body weight that you can achieve somewhere around 10 to 20 kilograms of weight loss, a medication that is given once a week. And if you do this medicine, 95%, 95%, the same thing with the semaglutide, or those who have prediabetes reverse to normal glycemia. 95%. So now we have very important agents that produce weight loss, and of course that's going to improve all the complications associated with obesity, and of course will prevent diabetes and prediabetes. So in the past, for the last who knows how many years, a century, we started with insulin, now we have all of these agents. We have been concentrated on improving glycemic control in order to prevent long-term microvascular complications. You do not reduce cardiovascular disease except if you use the SGLT2s and the GLP-1. I think that the next frontier is going to be weight loss. 
because weight loss is going to improve not only glycemic control, but it's going to control all of the complications associated with obesity, such as obstructive sleep apnea, NAFL, or non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, osteoarthritis, hyperlipidemia, hypertension, coronary heart disease, type 2 diabetes. This is where we're going to go. Weight-centric approach has much greater benefit in a patient who is overweight, with 80% of people with diabetes or prediabetes are overweight or obese. This is the way we should manage patients, not just giving medication to bring the blood glucose down that has not been shown to decrease all of the cardiovascular mortality. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Alka. Come, I'll just make a comment. Because we are running, running short, short of time, time I, I will, will 